Hello there folks, back again for another video. In this one we are diving into the rules section of the new Skaven Battle Tome for Warhammer Age of Sigmar and the 4th edition. Uh, now I won't pretend to be any kind of badass when it comes to uh, the rules and knowing what's best to take and all that kind of stuff. Um, but if you are interested in that kind of thing, there's some videos. I'll put some links down below that you can go check out uh, from other creators who will sort of guide you through pretty much everything in here. But I kind of just wanted to give you a little bit of a taste for how it's all laid out and uh, kind of what I think about it from a sort of um, uh, sort of a, an intro standpoint, I suppose you'd say. Um, one of the things that I really liked is that they've kind of done a really good breakdown of the, of the rule section so that it all kind of makes sense. Like as well as there being faction rules, war scrolls, the spearhead and the path to glory stuff, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I also think within that they've done a really nice job of organizing bits and pieces. So you have um, each of the elements of the different clans together in one space. So they've done a really good job of kind of melding it all together. So if you want to know where about clan scryer stuff, just go to those pages and find it, and it'll all be next to each other, which I think is a really um, good addition to these battle tomes um so yeah let's dive in and have a look obviously you've got your faction rules as always you can have a look at them there so you think they're all particularly skaven in their identity i quite like the too quick to hit hit rule which means that no more damage is inflicted by friend on friendly skaven infantry and cavalry units when they retreat which is a really skaven rule and then obviously the lurking vermin tide mixed with things like nor hole ambush and stuff and the splinters of the vermin doom are going to be great for manoeuvring your Skaven around the battlefield and having some fun. Uh, you also have various different uh, battle formations which kind of match up to the different um, clans that you can get. So you've got one that is more scryer focused one that is more Molder-focused, one that is more Pestilence-focused, and then there is the Verminous one as well. So depending on which way you wanted to go with your force to theme it, you have some options on that front. Um I would say that Scryer and Mulder, as they seem to be the uh, detective duo, no, <laughs> Scryer and Mulder, uh, while they seem to be the focus of the narrative at the moment, they're the ones that have got slightly more fleshed out and fun rules, I would say, for the different armies. So you've got some really fun things there for prototypes and their different creations. But I would also say that the um, Pestilence one is still pretty good. Uh, and then, obviously, uh, adding one to the rank characteristic of the targets and melee weapons for the rest of the turn, when you pick three uh once per turn for your combat phase it's just a great way for you to kind of claw your way through enemy armies so a really nice little bonus one for you there as well um obviously eshin not featuring but that's because eshin is being left out which is a real shame i think they're hopefully going to come next year that would be really fun um you also have your heroic traits as you can see and your various artifacts as power there too not a lot has massively changed from the um, faction packs that came out the indexes um so bear that in mind um and a lot of this stuff can change so uh you can find a lot of stuff online anyway if you want to dive into a little bit more detail uh you have your spell laws which again is a little bit disappointing um i mean the spells themselves are fun and very skaven but it seems a real shame that you still only have three of them I was kind of hoping that once we got the actual battle tomes, they would have expanded this to a full six spells, maybe. That would have been fun. But just having three that are very similar to the ones, if not exactly the same as the ones from the faction pack, just seems like a little bit of a letdown. Um, again, you have the same three prayers and then the manifestation laws as well. Um, so it's a little bit of a shame, I suppose uh it'd be interesting to see maybe if they come back next year and they throw even more into the pot when it comes to spells and prayers in a more general fashion for different factions um so that anybody can take them but i just think that that it's something of a missed opportunity by games workshop to not throw more stuff into these books to make them more of a, uh, a viable purchase for people uh who want a little bit more out of their factions like you could have done a lot more stuff in there that would have been pestilence fl um, flavored or um, uh, or eshin flavored and that kind of thing. Yes, I guess those get added into war scrolls in some cases, um, but it would have been nice to see them uh, as part of that spell selection as well. And then, of course, all your different war scrolls. So they're broken down to the various characters. Still good to see Thankwell looking very cool. So you've got all your different vermin lords there, which is good to see. You've got your Grace here, your Grace here on the screaming bell. 
the Arch Warlock and the Warlock Galvanir alongside the Storm Fiends. And again, this is all of the Scryer stuff, so it's all collected into one place, which is good to see. And as you, as you, as you can see, there is a lot of Scryer stuff. Then you've got your Pestilence stuff. It's nice to see that the Plague Pack popped back up. Um, so this was a Warcry Warband with this little tiny rat. Lovely. Um, so you've got the Plague Pack back, which is good to see. Um, and one of the only things that's necessarily fun, I suppose you'd say, for the new Pestilence stuff. If you were trying to do a Pestilence-themed army, you're still having to run on these older kits, which is a bit of a shame. But there we go. Again, since everything else got updated, why didn't they bother? Why didn't they bother to do uh, updates for um, the the whole range? But there we go. Uh, you've also then got the rules for Critok, who we were talking about in the previous video, including a fun little story where he's bargaining with the demon in the blade, the vermin lord in the blade. Um, all of your verminous stuff, so your claw lords, your clan rats, your storm vermin. And then your Molder stuff. So you've got the Master Molder, the Helpit Abomination, the Rat Ogres, and the Brood Terror. And then a little bit of stuff on Clan Eshin. Um, again, a little bit of a disappointment. Obviously, it's nice to see that the Death Master miniature is still there and alive and kicking. Um, I just I cannot fathom why these are still here. And they even bothered to put pictures in, in the miniatures. I mean, seriously. It's, it's such a shame. I know I kept talking about it in the previous video, but it's such a shame that Clan Eshin just got this. Imagine if they'd had a Death Master. They would have got new Night Runners. They could have got new Gutter Runners. Ugh. You could have had another sort of like, uh, I don't know, range unit that they could have thrown in with like sniper rifles or something like uh, Clan Scryer. I mean, a missed opportunity, Games Workshop. Uh, you also have their various War Scrolls for their um, Endless Spells, etc., so you play those in and then you have uh, some fun stuff here for those people who want to dive into uh, Spearhead and learn to play. So if you had the Skaven Time box set or if you wanted to get your hands on these bits and pieces anyway, you have the rules for the North Feast Claw Pack, which is your Spearhead for diving into the game. And it's presented in the same fashion as um, uh, previous uh additions to books for like 40k and stuff where you get everything over a couple of pages and they're all double page spreads so it's nice and easy so you have this which kind of gives you an idea of the tactics for your spearhead which i think is a really nice addition to the book so it says this is how you should play them this is where you should commit for them this is how you should use them in your games when you're first playing you also have this which i think is a really fun little addition so it gives you an idea of um how to quickly finish well, not necessarily quickly, but how to finish your miniatures and get them battle ready. So it doesn't take them beyond the battle ready step, but it takes them up to the point where you could start gaming with them very easily with base coats and washes, which I think is a really fun addition to the book and something that should potentially be expanded, I think, where you wanted to dive into more detail. But then there's the rules. Just like in the Fire and Jade book, you have a breakdown of what's in the set and some background on them. You have then your battle traits, which you uh, get both of, alongside your regiment abilities that you pick and your enhancements, which are again tied into the main game. And then all of your war scrolls for the spearhead are spread across two pages and they're just broken down and easy to dive into for you to use in your games. So just set that up and away you go and have some fun with that, which is good. And obviously you don't need points for spearhead. So you don't have to worry about anything additional on the table. Just have this open and flick back and forth to the Spearhead as you go. I still think Spearhead is an absolutely fantastic game mode. If you want to learn more about that, make sure to go and check out the video where I talked about it in more detail there as well. Now, this is cool. So Path to Glory is a really fun way to dive into Warhammer Age of Sigmar. And this is the first instance of where we can see how you can dive in and actually have some fun with the more thematic elements of this using the new battle tomes. So this is the start of the new Anvil of Apotheosis set of rules. So when you dive into playing Path to Glory now with the Skaven, you can choose to use this as the sort of entry point for playing your games. And it has all the extra bits and pieces that you'd expect for Path to Glory that you'll need from the core rulebook, but you can make your own characters with their own specific set of stats and everything else, which I think is really cool. So that's 
your starting war scroll that you get. And then from there, you get a series of destiny points that you get to spend on building your particular character. So you can have one Anvils of Apotheosis here on your Order of Battle in Army roster, and they will be your Warlord. They can be your Warlord. And then you start to build them. So you start off with their basic stats. Then you can move into modifying it using the different great clans. So you can go Eshin, Scryer, Pestilence, Molder, the Master Clan, or Clan Verminus, and this costs you a certain amount of your destiny points, which then give you a new ability, which is cool. And then your regiment option is tied into your particular choice of clan, which is very fun. Beyond that, then, you dive into picking various uh, flaws and origins, which is really cool. So you can dive in and start to make a really fun narrative-style character. So if you pick a flaw, you obviously get a awkward <laughs> downside as it were almost but uh you also then get additional destiny points that you can spend later on you also then get a series of origins which will help you build up your character and take it in different directions then you can give it mounts and contraptions which is really fun um and yes it just oh my god it's so much fun i really enjoy where they're going with this because it means that you actually start to make your own fun characters and tell fun stories and get into the kit bashing side of things um from there you also get to dive into sort of uh adapt adaptations upgrades and mutations for your skaven so you can take them in different ways there too and then other upgrades you can start to change your controls characteristic your move your health you can give yourself a ward save you can uh, give yourself a badass weapon and all sorts of other bits and pieces in order to kind of upgrade and make your character your own and this is then tied into a particular points value that you would have seen at the start so that tells you how much they cost in terms of your overall army. So maybe if you were starting out and you were doing a 2,000 points, no, not 2,000, 1,000 points uh, path to glory, you might go, well, I'll go with a Skaven Chieftain to begin with, uh, and then I'll use that as the basis to then start building up your character and taking him in different ways. But how cool is that? As a fun way for you to build your characters and take them in different directions. It also means that you get to play around with different model kits and do the kit bashing, as I said before, but also maybe even uh, sort of tweak existing kits or find one from uh, different creators that you could use in order to build your various characters. You also then get a couple of different uh, paths for you to dive into as well. So there is one for uh, your heroes and there is one for the uh, units that you have. So these take the role of the various paths that you would have got in the normal Path to Glory but they allow you to go down a particularly Skaven-themed um, route. Um, so, for example, if you're an aspiring uh, hero, you can go with, at the beginning anyway, Touched by Warpstone, add one to your health, or Truly Ravenous, add one to charge rolls for your turn, so you can either make him or uh, sort of eager and happy to dive into the... Uh, the um, the battle or you can make them last a little bit longer and then as you rank up you choose one or the other and the same goes for your uh, units as well so if you start off with the units at uh, aspiring level they can have scurrying menace when this unit uses the always three claw steps ahead ability add two to the move characteristics unit or for that move or merciless raiders add one to hit rolls for this unit's combat attacks while it's wholly within enemy territory if it is charged in the same turn so again some fun ways for you to take your armies and your units in different directions. And then to cap things off, we also have a couple of the Army of Renown. So you've got the Great Grand Norhor, Nor Horde <laughs> that we saw uh, uh, pictured earlier on. And this gives you a particular way of playing the game with its own set of battle traits, heroic traits, spell lore, etc. So you get an extra spell in there, which is good. Um, you've also then got Thankwall's Mutated Menagerie, which is more Mulder focused. And again, fun to see uh, Thankwall getting some uh, fun times on the tabletop. And then you have a couple of regiments of renown. Uh, yeah, two of the regiments for now. So you've got uh, one for Critox Claw Pack and one for the Vault Claws Engine Coven. And these give you um, fun regiments that you can use alongside your uh, other armies from for example chaos as you can see there all the different armies uh so if you have 
the need to throw Skaven into another army. You have some options there as well, which is good. It's a little bit of a shame that in order to get your hands on these and pretty much all of the rules that we've just looked at throughout the rest of this book, you have to use the code in the back of this book, access the app, and then head on there and get your rules via that way. Um, so you can't just tinker and play around with uh, the rules as you see fit. Um, that is still something that I am I'm forever going to be annoyed at Games Workshop for, that they don't have uh, all the rules free online on their app, because um, this should just be a fun law book, effectively, and then everything else should be free. But there we go. Uh, if you are interested in picking up these battle tomes, please let me know what you think of this. And did you like the rules for the Skaven as part of the new, well, the first battle tome for uh, Warhammer Age Sigma 4th Edition? Were there anything, was there anything that you think was missing that you'd love to see put in? Have you played around with Path to Glory? And uh, yeah, what do you think Think in general about the uh, book as a whole? Please let me know in the comments down below. Like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. I'm going to go back and start painting some more Skaven because there's so many of them to paint. Um, but yeah, I'll be back in the future with even more on Age of Sigma. I'll definitely look into the Stormcast Eternals book when it lands. Definitely be picking that up and having some fun with it. But uh, yeah, I'll see you folks very, very, very soon. Bye for now. Bye.